Hey guys, welcome back to Collection Wars. My name is Gabe, and here's Starsky Michael. <laughs> I guess I'm hunched, right? <laughs> you know, so how you doing, Gabe? Good, good. I'm excited for part two of our Fourth of July weekend special, um, showing both of our collections. I'm sure you guys had a amazing time watching Michael's collection, and his collection is mind blowing. And thank you for thank sharing you. that, Michael. Um, yeah, so, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So today we're going to do a tour of my collection and go through some of the updates and kind of just, you know, go throughout my house too. I have a bunch of other different uh, replicas and, you know, pop culture stuff around the house that I would love to share with you guys. So uh, I guess without further ado, let's check out my collection. And before we get into that, into that awesome collection that you have, Gabe, I think what's really, really cool for the viewers that are watching is the not just the inspiration but the ideas that that they can achieve from seeing how some of these things have been displayed it's really really cool Absolutely. you don't you don't have a million views on one of your channels for nothing <laughs> <laughs> stop it stop it stop it. <laughs> all right guys so let's check out my collection so here is my collection room obviously you guys have seen I'm sure videos and pictures of it but there is a few updates that I want to go through and show you guys so let's take a look at them so this wall right here is essentially where I keep all of the weapons um, whether it be blasters or lightsabers and then obviously I have some studio scale stuff uh, made by master replicas there which we'll go through in a second so we'll start with this top row. Now that's um, some Death Star plans, uh, obviously from Rogue One. And I also have the Yoda lightsaber uh, from episode three. Now this is the essentially quote unquote battle damage version. And then I have Yoda's little lamp and that lamp is available only at the Disney parks, but it's really cool. Now I also have the Obi-Wan saber from Master Replicas. But what I did here is I actually obtained a autograph by uh, Alec Guinness from an old just check. And what I did is I cut out his autograph and made a special plaque to put it on and essentially, you know, kind of displayed it as a as a signature edition. Now, here is one of my older pieces. Now this is the Han Solo blaster, as you can see there, from Empire Strikes Back and Master Replicas. And I also have the droid collar, and this one was made by Anovos. Um, that one's the all aluminum um, version of it, obviously you can see there. And you can see this is actually one of my oldest uh, collectibles. Um, it even has a little crack there from one of my moves. So let's go down here. So here is the um, signature edition, uh, A New Hope Luke Saber. And obviously, as you can see there, it has Mark Hamill's autograph on there. Uh, this is definitely one of those iconic pieces that I just love. It's, you know, just one of my favorites in my collection. And then I have the Empire Strikes Back Saber. This is just the limited edition version. And then the Return of the Jedi version two Saber. So as you could see, I specifically was looking for the three Luke Savers. Um, maybe in the future, I'll look for the LE version, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the V2. Down here, we have the Rebel Trooper Blaster. Now this is one of those pieces that I was never really interested in until, you know, once after Master Replicas became kind of harder to get, and I ended up having to pay a little bit more than than they used to go for because you could find these for like four or five hundred bucks back in the day but i was just never interested in it until it was no longer available right now down here is the ahsoka tano um, director's edition saber and this one's autographed by dave filoni which as you guys know right he's the creator of uh, clone wars and obviously with the mandalorian and he's just been involved in all the new projects and yeah that one's made by efx and then down here that one's just a fan-made uh, blaster it's one of the biker scout blasters and it's just a fan-made one 
So here in this middle section up there, uh, as you can see, it's the Regal Robot um, Mythosaur skull. But what's really funny is that a lot of people point out that it looks like it's baby Grogu up there, right? Baby Yoda as a shadow, which is a funny little, I don't know, little coincidence that happens there, but everyone seems to point it out. Now here is my um, Boba Fett Spe Return of the Jedi Special Edition uh, jetpack. Now I had this one specifically um, commissioned to be pretty much an exact replica of the special edition version. Now the reason why I went special edition is because when they shot the special editions, um, I, I believe it was the late 90s, right? Early 2000s. Um, they pulled out the jetpack and obviously it was way more beat up than you know when they first filmed um, Return of the Jedi. So I really like the the look of just really, really weathered and and kind of all the paint chipped off. So that's why I chose the special edition version. But this thing is beautiful. Um, it was commissioned by, uh, or I, I commissioned this this amazing artist on Instagram. He goes by uh, Boba Fett has college debt and he makes some amazing, amazing paint jobs. So. If you guys are looking to get one of these painted, definitely hit him up. Now down here is the Master Replicas 32 inch um, studio scale Falcon, right? And this thing is a beautiful piece. I love it. Um, I think I've told you guys some of the stories behind it. It has a lot of meaning, especially you know from from the family that I bought this uh, from, just because the. The gentleman that used to own this was also an attorney and a big Star Wars fan. So I think the family appreciated that this guy went to, to my collection, right? Because they knew I would appreciate it just like he did. But this thing is beautiful. You can see there, I have some of my original vintage. Um, this is from the micro sets. So little metal R2 and C3, but they're not to scale. I just keep them there. And down here is the Signature Edition uh, AT-AT from Master Replicas, right? And obviously it's the Signature Edition, so it has Phil Tippett's autograph. And that little speeder right there, I don't know if you guys know, but um, that little speeder was actually gifted to Carrie Fisher after filming Empire Strikes Back. And Master Replicas, when they were you know, going through the archives and trying to figure out what they were going to do with this piece, they actually uh, reached out to Carrie and asked if they could use her her broken speeder uh, for this um, model, and she agreed. So as of now, that's actually the only licensed uh, studio scale snow speeder out on the market. Now, obviously, there's you know there's a licensed um, I guess it's 44 scale I want to say, but it's actually not a direct you know it doesn't have direct lineage like this one does but pretty cool. And this is definitely one of those grail pieces, right? All right, let's move up here. So now up here, I have a screen use piece of the Death Star. Now these things are starting to just get out of hand with pricing. I just recently heard that a piece just like this one sold for like $4,300. And it's just, it's insane how, how expensive screen use props are getting these days. Now down here, I have the Emperor's lightsaber. Again, this is Master Replicas. And this thing's cool. It just, obviously I had, I had Yoda's, so I had to get the Emperor's lightsaber. Now here is the EFX uh, reveal lightsaber, right? And I don't keep batteries in my, in my replicas, but obviously you guys know, and you look at some videos, there are little lights that, that start blinking in there everything opens and closes. And for you guys that don't know, there's a really cool story behind it, right? That this prop essentially was lost for decades and nobody seemed to know kind of what was going on with it. They would ask Mark Hamill about the scene where he you know, was constructing the lightsaber at the beginning of um, Return of the Jedi and he would always kind of deny it. He would say, you know, I, I don't remember filming that. Well, later, Later down the line, when they were doing the Blu-ray editions, they actually found the original scene um, where, you know, Luke is building the lightsaber, and it's right before he goes to Jabba's palace. So EFX did a replica of it. It's beautiful. Now here is another Grail piece, right? This is 
the Han Solo blaster from A New Hope. And again, Master Replicas. Now, this thing is obviously starting to get harder and harder to find um, just because the collectors don't want to let it go, right? And although there are some inaccuracies, right? There's a couple little things missing just because when Master Replicas jumped into this, they were very limited on the, you know, on some of the references they had. And, um, you know, but after some research, they actually figured out all of the mistakes they made on this one. And then they put out an Elite Edition. However, the Elite Edition, they put it out all nice and shiny and new, which a lot of collectors didn't like that, right? They liked the weathered look. So a lot of people tend to, to gravitate towards this one, which is the limited edition, instead of the elite edition. Another cool little, little backstory there. Now here, I wanted to do kind of the same thing as I did with my Luke savers. I wanted to get all of Vader's savers uh, from obviously from a new hope and this is the signature edition so it kind of matches right the the other ones see my OCD kicks in right it's like I had to have the signature edition of this one too this one's autographed by David Prowse and James Earl Jones and down below obviously the Empire Strikes Back saber and right below it is the Return of the Jedi saber now I know what you're thinking Gabe why don't you dust your damn displays and you know what I'm thinking the same thing now that I'm watching this. <laughs> uh, down below is another grail piece, right? This is um, the signature edition Leia blaster. And obviously you could see there, it's autographed by Carrie Fisher. And again, this is one of those pieces that is just getting really, really hard to get because obviously, you know, the passing of, of Carrie and, you know, people don't want to let go of, of these. So definitely a grail piece. And down below, I have Count Dooku's lightsaber, autographed by Christopher Lee. And again, I, I'm a big fan of the Empire and the, the Sith, so and especially Christopher Lee, because as you guys have heard over our you know few episodes that I've talked about, I'm a big fan of Christopher Lee uh, and the the Hammer films um, and Tarkin too. You know, Peter Cushing. They did a bunch of these horror films back in the '70s uh, through the the filming company hammer hammer films and that's why i just had to have this lightsaber even though i'm not a big fan of the prequels this one was a must and then down below the dustiest of them all <laughs> is the thermal detonator by master replicas now this thing's also really cool it lights up it makes little sounds and one day i'm gonna have to really clean these cases all right now let's talk about the helmets so first up here is the Master Replica's Boba Fett helmet. And this thing is beautiful. Obviously, it's there's there's a few little inaccuracies, the kill stripes on the side, but it's still displays so beautiful and you know it's it's fiberglass. It just feels like a nice solid helmet. And I, I just I love this helmet. Okay, now let's look below. Now underneath is the EFX Mandalorian helmet. And this is obviously limited edition, you guys know that. And I have a bunch of other cool stuff in here. So I have a little credit that you can get from uh, the Disney parks. Uh, I have the Regal Robot little, um, what are they called? I forget, maybe it says on the bottom. Well, I don't remember what they're called. But anyways, the little bombs. Uh, that's the Regal Robot uh, little mythosaur piece. Got a little piece of a Beskar. Um, and which is all aluminum, super cool. And then our buddy Joseph, you know, gifted us these little little badges, which are awesome. And then back there is the client's uh, medallion. Pretty cool. Now down here, like I said, even though I'm not a prequel fan, this piece was a must. Uh, look at this thing. It looks like real bone. And these are only available at the Disney parks as well. So if you are near a Disney park and you like these kind of things, definitely suggest picking these up. They're actually not that bad either. They're only about like three, I want to say like 350 and uh, it's beautiful. And down below here is a Death Trooper helmet. And that's an Anovos helmet and it's also super cool. Let me lighten it up there so you can see it. 
Now, obviously, Rogue One is such an amazing movie, so I just had to have at least one helmet from that. All right, so next up is the EFX Biker Scout helmet. And again, that's also limited edition. Oh, the plaque fell down. Oh, well. Um, beautiful helmet. You know, there, there were some complaints about the gap on the visor. Obviously, how the way I have it displayed, it doesn't really bother me, but there's a lot of people out there that didn't like that gap. Uh, this is the Anobos ATAT uh, driver helmet. This thing is also beautiful. I love it, but it's huge. So these are Vesta cabinets and they it, it won't fit facing forward just because it's such a huge piece. Now down below is the TIE Fighter helmet. And this is the Captain Oxyxo uh, variant. And I just recently picked up the little chess piece um, by this guy on Etsy, Moncal. Um, he's, he's been around for a while. He makes uh, these helmets and the, the armor and stuff, but I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Moncal. And down below is the Anovo's um, Snowtrooper helmet there. And so Anovo's originally was gonna put out two different variants or two different versions, right? The clean version and then the kind of weathered version. And I actually ended up picking up the weather one first until I got a notification from Anovo's that they were canceling my order and that I guess they were only approved to do the clean ones. Which, you know, now looking at it, I, I'm glad that I got the clean one because it kind of matches the rest of the, the helmets, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this next row is what I refer to as the ev evolution row, right? Because it kind of shows you the evolution of the Stormtrooper. And, you know, we'll start up here with the EFX uh, Phase 1 helmet. And again, this thing's beautiful. Um, you know, fiberglass fully padded really cool the other thing though that's kind of interesting about this helmet and this helmet is that even though um so this one's actually master replicas so these things are all cgi in the movies so they didn't really have physical props to work off of so these were all just based on the the three-dimensional um files that they had so they did an amazing job also fiberglass also fully padded and down here is the Master Replicas limited edition helmet. Again, this is fiberglass version. Um, this one actually comes with two separate uh, bubble lenses. It comes with the green set and a gray set. So if you wanna do obviously the, the hero version versus the, the standard version. Um, this one's also has an interesting backstory because Master, this was the last thing that Master Replicas put out. And actually they, they didn't finish the whole run right they were supposed to do what 2500 and they ended up doing only 2000 and efx picked up the license and finished the the run of the last 500. so cool little backstory there and then this is the anovo's um uh, stormtrooper helmet from the or first order stormtrooper helmet from the force awakens now the interesting thing about this one is actually this one was used uh, or was only available to the 501st members for the red carpet premiere and I wanted one so bad and I, I, I literally was telling Anovos at, at one of the, com the comic conventions where people were picking these up if they would sell me one and you know the owners were like no nah, we can't we can't they're only available to the 501st so then I reached out to a buddy who's in the 501st and then I got one so <laughs> there you go all right, let's move on to the next section. All right, so up here we have the Anovo's Imperial Guard helmet. And this thing is also beautiful. Um, it's fiberglass. It is, it just, it, honestly, it just pops in my collection. Just, uh, probably because of the, the color, right? Compared to all the other ones, but it's just such an impressive helmet. And down below is the EFX limited edition um, Vader helmet from A New Hope. And I ended up purchasing a little signature plaque um, from Brian Muir. Um, again, these were essentially made from, from the molds of the original A New Hope uh, helmet. They made a couple versions of these. They made the, the Legend Edition, which had um, Brian Muir's autograph on it already. Uh, they left that one all wonky. The next one is this one, which is the limited edition version. 
which um, it's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit more stylized, but they did leave a lot of little details that um, that the original one had. And then obviously there's the PCR version, which is kind of the plastic version. But all of these are great helmets. Now down here is the Master Eddy melted helmet. This is the Master Eddy version two. And beautiful piece, Master Eddy was kind enough to, to make me one of these. And it just, it's been in my collection and it, it will continue to be in my collection even though I have the EFX version. And down below we got Mr. Kylo Ren himself. This is the Anovo's premiere helmet. And it just, it's, I, to me, I like Kylo Ren, the look of Kylo Ren. I don't necessarily like the character, but I really like the look of the mask. So, all right, let's move on to the next section. Now, up here is the Master Replica's Boba Fett Blaster. And this thing is massive. I mean, it, it's huge and it's heavy. It's really heavy. Um, they made uh, 1,500 of these. This was number 59. And I have, look at how dusty this is. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I got to really clean in here. Um, but I actually, really interesting story. There was an auction uh, a few years ago by this, you know, this guy who, uh, who, you know, the sheriff went and took all his replicas and his vintage toys and they did an auction and I ended up picking up a few pieces from it. This one was brand new, sealed in the box. It was just, I, I got really lucky in that auction, but it's definitely one of the centerpieces in my collection. Now down here, now down here is my Han Solo in Carbonite. And for you guys that don't know, I actually made this um, with the help, obviously, of a lot of talented people on the RPF and just on the forums. And yeah, I essentially bought some like the, the front panel kit, the side kits, and then I just put it all together. And obviously the paint and weathering took me the longest. Um, it does have working panels. I'm still not finished. I'm, I'm missing a couple little details on the panels, but I love this thing. I love the fact that it lights up. Um, the sequence, actually, you could change the sequences. So I think it's this one, let me see. You could change the sequences from like the Java scene, right? Or the, um, the Bespin scene. So I guess they, they replicate everything, including the little the little dots and the flashing lights. So it's pretty awesome. So now here we have my trench run set. And so the first one obviously is the Luke helmet and this is the EFX collectibles one, limited edition. Um, and it's such a cool helmet. Like I said, I'm not necessarily into, you know, into the, the rebels, but you know, I, I had to at least represent this All right the tent the trench run is just such an iconic part of the movie so obviously this is wedge's helmet and below is big's helmet down here and this is an rs uh, props master helmet and it's the autograph version and definitely a cool piece but this guy right here has a very very interesting story um so this was actually an efx uh wedge piece like the it's essentially this helmet but one day when i was moving stuff around i dropped it and it cracked and so i decided you know i'm just gonna buy another one and repaint this and do the um blast shield version and i it took me a long time to do this every single stencil i actually did myself I took screenshots of the movie and the helmet and I digitally copied each stencil. Um, and then my wife, she does crafting too. So she has like, you know, this, this special vinyl cutter. So I did the stencils exactly based on the ones used or essentially the, the screen grabs and replicated them uh, on her vinyl little cutter and then just spray painted them through there. Then it came out pretty much, I mean, most exactly as the, the filming one. So I'm really happy with this. I'm really proud of, of what I did with this helmet. All right, now in this little corner over here, we have the, the little Stormtrooper from Rogue One. You guys remember it's, uh, it's Jen Erso's um, Stormtrooper that the, um, the Death Troopers pick up in Rogue One. Well, they sell little replicas of them at the Disney park. So 
Again, if you guys go, definitely pick one of these up. They're only like, I want to say like 30 or 40 bucks. Now, next over here, we got little baby Grogu, right? Little baby Yoda. And this is the EFX collectibles version. And this thing is just such a cool piece. Um, it's uh, Le Legacy FX, I believe, is the company that worked on the film. Um, and they use their master patterns to, to create this. So really cool piece. Now down below here is the Master Replica's uh, training remote. The Jedi training remote. Obviously I keep it next to this bad boy because, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and then down below is the Sideshow Collectibles 1-6 um, probe droid. Now eventually, you, our buddy Lee has been trying to convince me to get that half scale one, which I'm not going to get. But I am definitely in the market for a studio scale one. So. That one's probably going to get upgraded eventually to a studio scale. Now, speaking of upgrades, um, up here we have the uh, X Plus Dejaric set. Now, these things are beautiful, and they actually use the digital files that um, essentially that Regal Robot had, the, at least the, the early ones. Um, so they are pretty damn close to the to the Regal Robot scale and 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 everything. Obviously. We all know the Regal Robot one's gonna have like real clothes on them. There's gonna have the little hair on it. But as far as size, um, they're pretty much identical. So, but obviously you guys know I did order the, the chest set. So I will probably be selling these in the, in the future. Now down below here is the infamous Rancor. And this thing again is just such a cool piece and obviously a centerpiece in in this collection and i just i love the way it looks just looks so menacing and obviously i'm i made a full video on my youtube channel um so if you want to see any more like up close shots go check that out but this is definitely one of my my favorite pieces here and i got number eight and down below here is Mr. CZ3. And as you guys may have heard, uh, Pete, our buddy Pete, Big Cat Pete, um, was the person who essentially was the first to commission one of these. And their, you know, Regal Robot was working on it. He ended up getting the AP. And then I ended up lucky enough to get number one. So there's only 15 of these made. And it's just such a... Uh, for me, it's scary, actually. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a goofy droid. But I was terrified of this thing when I was growing up. So, But super cool piece. Now, up there are the Sideshow Collectibles, Premium Format, R2, C-3PO, and BB-8. And those just look really cool. Um, those actually I might take out of this room and put them out in the house somewhere. Just because they do look kind of, I don't know. They, I think they're they're classy enough to... You know to just be regular home decor i might get rid of the bb-8 but definitely the r2 and 3po are are staying and then here we have the sideshow collectibles life size 3po bust and this thing is really cool if you there's a button on the back you push and his light his eyes light up um you know the head does move you know you could kind of pose it however you want and it has the little the little restraining bolt and kind of just keys in there Let me get it around there. there it is pretty cool and these are also getting harder and harder to come by and i've noticed that the ones that do come around they have a lot of paint issues where like the paint is starting to bubble up in certain places but luckily i've been i've been lucky with mine and then down here is my r2d2 and as you guys know i built this myself let me i just upgraded the little switch here and i put batteries in it just for you guys let's see sometimes it takes a little bit to turn on there it is so it's, it all lights up it is fully rc'd and it does have um, you know the remote control and all that I haven't charged that battery because it just sits here in my room you know so I don't really have a need for it but here's the back of it 
usually most people don't see it so I did all the paint and the weathering and all that and again it's one of these one of these pieces that I'm so proud of the weathering that I did on this and I, I just I love the way it came out you know it's to me it's perfectly weathered and you know not to <laughs> toot my own horn there but you know I, I that's my favorite part of a build is the the weathering part of it now I have been there I'm doing upgrades to some of the parts because when I first started doing it as you can see it's missing some parts here when I was first doing it I you know being the impatient person that I am I started buying a lot of parts that were resin instead of um, aluminum so just recently I started purchasing a bunch of aluminum parts to uh, to replace the resin ones I just haven't had the time to install them in there but yeah those eventually will get installed and eventually I'm gonna upgrade the whole thing to every part that's resin is gonna be aluminum um, which I'm not too far away from so now up there is the Regal Robot um, Tauntaun maquette as you guys know uh, this one I purchased directly from Tom at the Regal Robot booth at San Diego Comic Con maybe two years ago I think and yeah I took that one home just straight from the booth so if you guys see videos of of it at Comic Con it's actually this one and down here let's see down here is my prop shop Kylo Ren lightsaber now obviously you guys know the story about prop shop right they they had the license to create some of these pieces but they lost it really quick within a few months of releasing these pieces um, I initially got a defective version which was kind of bluish purple and I sent it back for an exchange now while we were waiting for the exchange everyone started getting letters from Disney and emails saying that they were gonna refund them all their money and they were gonna stop making things so I was really bummed out thinking I wasn't gonna get a replacement uh, obviously you guys heard the story from our buddy Joseph right that that happened to him with the bowcaster that exact same thing where the the case was damaged so he sent it back and then he got one of those dreaded letters or emails telling him that he was gonna get a refund instead of the product but luckily I did get a replacement and it was perfect so I I actually have a suspicion that it might be one of the the display ones one of the ones that they were showing at like comic-con and at d23 but uh, I haven't been able to verify it quite yet but beautiful piece there's the little plaque now over on these I have some prints and some uh, some artwork that I've been collecting over the years um, and like I said I, I, I try to focus kind of on the museum style look for in here so everything that I have is essentially framed in these gold frames but as you can see there's I'm doing a little bit of remodeling in here so there's a lot that I have been put up but these are awesome that's actually the number one out of these prints and yeah got fanboys got uh, just a bunch of them um lots of cool cool prints that eventually are going to go back up all right now over here we have the metal of yavin that's also master replicas now i took it out of the case that it originally came with so that way i could hang it up on the wall uh, but this thing is beautiful i love this piece and right below it is the Emperor's cane and the cloak cloak clasp <laughs> I always get stuck on that word um, by master replicas and that thing's a really cool piece as well now let's move on down here so first look at, I need to <laughs> dust and vacuum in here I really apologize guys uh, so that's actually a wine from Skywalker Ranch as you guys heard and you know if you've been watching our show uh, I was lucky enough to to go into Skywalker Ranch legally <laughs> so I bought a bunch of souvenirs and one of the one of the things they have a, a winery there so I ended up picking up a bottle of wine um, from from their from their vineyard so it's a it's a cool piece Skywalker Summit so just had to pick that up anyways over here we have the sideshow collectibles premium format Emperor and right below it are the premium format guards now these things are huge and it's it's just hard for me to display them anywhere as you guys could see um, I don't have a lot of space in here left so 
right behind it is the Master Replica Snow Speeder uh, Studio Scale. Like I mentioned, um, I don't believe this one, and I'm sure Michael will, will know more about that, but I don't believe it's 100% um, uh, screen accurate. Uh, I believe even the dimensions are not, but it's still a really cool piece. The Snow Speeder is definitely one of my favorite ships in Star Wars, and I just had to get it. Now here is the EFX uh, Burnt Vader helmet. And this is the one that I made a video of and you know, Michael, Michael was like, I gotta get it. And it, it is really good. Like I said, the, the print is just so good, the, in, the inside. So I know in my video I mentioned that in my opinion, it actually might be a little better than, than the prop shop one. Um, although the prop shop one is probably a little bit more um, rare, right? Because there's probably less of those out there making it more valuable. But as far as maybe accuracy, I think this one takes takes the trophy. You know, this is it's such a cool piece. I love the display too. All right, now let's move on to the side here. So I got my Princess Leia hologram here. And this thing is so cool. Got the EFX um, Death Star tiles. And there's those. And then I got a couple little screen use pieces. Um, a little piece of um, the Sarlacc pit signed by Jeremy Bullock. And a little piece of Ewok fur. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have too many um, screen use pieces when it comes to Star Wars because as you guys saw, I'm sure you guys witnessed the the frenzy that was happening during the, the prop store auction, but those things go for hundreds and thousands of dollars, which yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm happy with my with my little screen use piece of the Death Star. Now moving on over here, that is the uh, Sideshow Collectibles uh, premium format biker scout with the speeder bike super cool piece huge right and it's probably the closest thing to the studio scale ones that you can get now down below is a stormtrooper blaster and it's a little hard because of the glare but this thing is super cool and finally below got the regal robot um job of the hut maquette number eight and then over here i have the Princess Leia bracelets, um, along with some Regal Robot little gargoyles to uh, kind of complement it. So, cool little section here. Now let's move to my upstairs room and I'll show you guys some, some other stuff. Now this is another screen use piece that I have. This is the broken guitar, essentially the second version uh, of the guitar from uh, the Hateful Eight. Now this one has a cool story because uh, Kurt Russell was supposed to break this one. This is the one that they were supposed to cut and he was supposed to slam this one against the wall and break this. But instead, he actually broke a priceless museum piece um, that was loaned to the studio by Martin Guitars and the museum. And he actually broke the priceless one. And it's kind of cool that I have the little backstory on this one. So this one ended up just kind of hanging out, you know, on the floor for the rest of the film because obviously they're not going to leave the, you know, the priceless one. Um, so this one, you can see it in the film kind of on the floor in The Hateful Eight. Now we're also big Disney fans and my wife loves the movie Up. So we got a replica of the painting that's above the mantle um, from the movie. And again, you could get these at the Disney parks. Now I also have a few little replicas from Disney because like I said, our family, we're big Disney freaks. So up there we have a replica of the uh, Aladdin's lamp or the, the lamp from Aladdin. Um, it's from the film, from the live action one. Down here I have a little scaled model of the, um, the monorail and there's two versions and this master replicas actually made these. There's the blue version and there's the orangey version. This is a kind of cool piece. So this is the Snow White maquette um, that essentially I think Mark Davis uh, used 
as reference when he was creating Snow White for the film. And then I also have some little replica um, storybooks because you know me and replicas, love them. Uh, this is a replica of the musketeer ear, or Mouseketeer ears, also made by Master Replicas. Cool little piece. And again, just have like replicas of all the books um, from the movie. But what's actually really cool is that if you actually look inside of the, the books, they even replicated the first couple of pages. And if you watch the film, they actually look exactly like this on the film. So the first few pages of all the books are exact replicas. And then after that, it's, it's a notebook. But it's kind of cool. The first and last page are essentially what you see in the film. So pretty cool. And what else do I have? Eh, that's about it on this little shelf. All right, now let's go. Oh, upstairs. and by the way, if you guys didn't know, I'm a big guitar, guitar guy. So our house is just littered with guitars everywhere. All right, here's an, another uh, screen or movie production piece. So these were made for Back to the Future Part Three, and this is an actual production piece. Um, so essentially, they made a bunch of these prints for the movie and I got this at an auction and it is definitely one of my favorite pieces. Uh, this is the, the map on uh, essentially how to rebuild the circuits um, in the DeLorean. If you guys remember that part from uh, part three. And down this hallway, I have my posters, my Star Wars posters. So here's part one, obviously Empire Strikes Back. And then I have the Revenge of the Jedi poster is definitely one of my my favorite and then because I have to complete the set right I have episode one episode two and then obviously episode three so I I wanted to stick with the essentially with the um, uh, what are they called uh, the teaser posters so except for this first one's not a teaser poster but the rest are all teasers and then these guys are also the teasers from the other films. Rise of Skywalker. So these are the ones that obviously Michael is the biggest fans of, right? Biggest fan of. These are his favorites. So I'm showing these for you, Michael. <laughs> uh, but although the Rogue One is, that's a really cool poster. All right. And then I also have this other cool poster that is the French version of the Ewoks adventure. And this thing is huge. I mean, obviously you could see, like that's the top of the, the doorway and it takes up this whole wall, huge piece. Let's see. Now here's my spillover room. And essentially this is where I keep all my other replicas that essentially are not Star Wars related. Um, I also keep a lot of my vintage stuff in here, you know, toys that just have a special meaning for me uh, just because it reminds me of my childhood. Like, for example, does anybody remember those laser tag games? I used to love that, the, just the design of it. And the reason why I used to love it is because of this garbage pail kid um, little card. And I actually growing up, I didn't grow up with a lot of money and my parents could never afford that. So now I was like, I have to get one of those laser guns. Um, and there they are. Now up there, that one is my original um, Han Solo gun. So that one has a very special place in my heart because it is mine. Below here are some Back to the Future things. Um, I just recently did an unboxing of this. So you guys, if you wanna see what's inside, go check that out. Other than that, I have the Mr. Fusion and the Flux Capacitor. And these are the Diamond Select um, toys. Now below here are the Matty Collector, or it is the Matty Collector hoverboard. And then some of the pieces that came in this little kit here, which is, um, you know, the, the license plates and the little bag and the receipt. Pretty cool. Now down here is a replica helmet of uh, Leonidas's helmet from 300 and the sword. And again, both of these are licensed replicas. Um, it's metal or brass, I guess. Um, super cool piece too. And then down below is a blaster 
uh, screen use blaster from the Hunger Games. I got a couple little screen use pieces down here. And um, yeah, let's check out the next section. So down here, I am a huge fan of the Misfits. Um, There's the you know punk band from the late 70s and 80s. Uh, and one of the reasons why I really like them is because a lot of their songs are um, actually based off of these old science fiction movies and these B movies. And uh, yeah, they've definitely been one of my favorite bands for years. Now here, this one's kind of special because me and my daughter made this, I mean, now like over 15 years ago um, at the little droid factory in Star Wars. Uh, not, not Actually, no, it was just regular Disneyland. Not at, obviously not at Star Wars uh, land. But here are some cool little pieces. Obviously, you see there, that's a replica of the Freddy glove. This is with the trick-or-treat version. And... Um, I actually modified it and I re-weathered it and I did a little paint upgrade to make it more screen accurate but this thing is so cool I always like to pick up little art pieces from <laughs> Comic Con look at this <laughs> Starbong um, yeah all these little little toys I, I love those at, at comic conventions and then the Mexican wrestler masks El Santo and Blue Demon because obviously you guys know I am Mexican and I grew up in Mexico and that was a big part of my childhood. Now here we have the um, the idol from uh, Indiana Jones and next to it are the ruby slippers from you know Wizard of Oz and the Cowardly Lion's uh, little medallion. Apparently I was I started dusting but <laughs> apparently I didn't finish. Next up here is the Ghostbusters Ghost Trap from Hollywood Collectibles. And um, I, this one's also modified. I, I got extra stickers and, um, you know, so it's more screen accurate. I did some extra weathering on it. I got the hose um, to make it match. Um, these are from Anovos. They're replicas of the, the little patches. Now next up here is uh, Michael's favorite movie right here, Spaceballs. <laughs> and they're replicas of, you know, the ring, the Schwartz, right? And uh, Lone Star's medallion. Now these two, they're, I've been buying these empty boxes in because I didn't want to get a brand new one where I would have to open it. So what I've been doing them is I've, I've been searching for them separately. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the boxes of just very specific ones that I had as a kid of the vintage figures and then have the actual toys out so I could you know just actually touch them and you know and I don't want, I'm not gonna say play with them right but definitely uh, at least have them out to touch um, I got this Rambo toy because I had that as a child and I had to repurchase it because it was such an important toy in my collection when I was a kid um storm shadow and snake eyes again huge part of my childhood especially those two uh, uh, uh up here sound wave lion -O, and obviously he-man and skeletor again very very important toys in my childhood same with those ninja turtles with the wrestling toys if you guys remember those now down here we got i'm a huge james bond fan and i got the golden gun and I got the um, uh, Ernst Straubel Blofeld's ring. And then this one's also one of the rings, but that's one of the, the henchman rings from the new movies. I got a screen use piece um, from Goldeneye. It's essentially the little soldiers, um, the little pin on their hat. The next section here, I have a replica of the Karate Kid headband. Um, this is one of the uh, the coins from uh, the Goonies. This is the key from the fifth element. This is the Taurus uh, Studios damage uh, helmet from, End is it Endgame? I don't, it, one of the Avengers, the last Avengers movie. This is another one of those little art pieces that I like to get when I go to Comic Cons. This one's only 50 of these made. Pretty cool little piece. And then a replica of the Willy Wonka ticket and the Wonka bar. And down here, I got a replica of Gizmo. And this is cool. This is the, 
the 3D glasses version. Um, and I forget the, the company that makes them, but you could, every once in a while, they come up on Sideshow Collectibles website. And here are some screen use pieces. Now this skull was screen used uh, or used in the Hunger Games, the Mockingjay part one. It's a scene where Katniss walks out into kind of the rubble and she steps on this, on this skull. So that she actually steps on it and there's a good close up shot of it. And this is that one. And then obviously my, probably the most important piece in my whole collection because just the, the history and importance of it. So this is the old Ben skull from Django Unchained. And this is the actual screen used one that Leonardo DiCaprio used. And it's the hero one that he actually cuts. And you could see the cut marks on the back. Uh, you can see it's actually fractured there because he, he hits this off the table at one point. Um, you could see where the glue marks were, where, where he pulls this part this this part um, to show them the three dimples which there's the three dimples and it even matches let me find it it matches where he grabs it with the with the pliers right there and he breaks this piece off off and then shows them the three dimples but anyways screen matched everything is screen matched and very important piece now down here are a couple little things that I've just been buying just randomly that remind me of my childhood. Uh, the GoBots little, um, oh, I forgot his name. Um, it'll come to me. And then some of the mask cars, uh, both of those. This little fight club. Now this guy is actually a replica of the, the one that's used in the poster. And the artist that did these offered a, a short run or small run of these and I happened to get one. Obviously, that's from Jurassic Park, and this is a replica of the um, the kryptonite. Uh, technically, it's not the kryptonite, but it's the the crystal that he finds that Superman finds in in the first movie that he throws, and it turns into the um, the oh my god, I can't, I'm spacing now into that big giant glass thing. Here is the sideshow or the Hot Toys um, gauntlet. This thing is massive. And then I got the Hot Toys um, other gauntlet, right? The one from that uh, Iron Man uses. So cool little piece. Now down here, I got some other little, this thing fell, but he goes up on top. Here's some, the Looney Tunes from McDonald's. It just reminded me of my childhood. Got all the superpowers. Got some of the villains. And then I got my Secret Wars toys. And these, again, just were a huge part of my childhood growing up. And I just, I needed to just get them all. Here's a replica of the bride's uh, sword from Kill Bill. And then these two are screen used from a movie called Apocalypto, if you guys watched it. And yeah, these were in the film. These were the, the hero uh, weapons that the main bad guy like the dad of, of the main bad guy i guess or the chief of the the bad tribe um these are his hero weapons and by hero it just means that there there may have been you know some close-up shots or they're just the ones that were made a little bit better for um close-up screen shots and then this bad boy this was one of the first pieces that i remember purchasing as a kid um and it's just one of those things that I just, I loved as a kid. And they're hard to find in, in great condition, but I found this one and I was just like, you know what? I don't care what condition it's in. It just reminds me of my childhood and I, I gotta get it. So there's that. Oh, and guys, I almost forgot. I needed to show. So I, I've been, been obsessing about getting pins and I've been collecting all these like random Star Wars pins but I wanted to show this because our buddy from uh, Left Coast Graphics is always watching and I just wanted to show him I'm, I'm getting there man I'm trying to collect them all but you know trying to trying to keep up <laughs> but thanks for watching man I, we, I always see you every Saturday on here watching and really appreciate the support man and then I also I forgot again there's a bunch of random pieces that I got to redo so I have a screen use piece from Inglorious Bastards. This is one of the um, 
the booklets that they give out at the the last scene where they blow up the theater and it has his autograph on that side obviously you know since these are some of the old master replicas uh, fx sabers but down there these two film cans right there is actually a an original um 35 millimeter complete film of elvis on tour and i used to work at a movie theater and we essentially bought an old theater and as they were renovating it they found this in a closet and they were going to throw it out and i was like can i just keep it so i kept it and it's the full i think it's six reels total of elvis on tour probably might be the only one out there i mean there i'm sure there's not a lot of them you know these things out there anymore but kind of cool i almost forgot one last piece this is another screen use piece uh this was screen used in the hunger games i want to say it's part two I, I forget but this is behind uh, president snow in his office and again this is a screen use piece and it's nobody could tell that it's from a movie because it actually looks like normal art so pretty cool there's also a replica of the haunted mansion placard and this uh little framed autograph by uh, bob gurr which we met at d23 again we're huge disney fans but i wanted to show you guys something here's something that a lot of people don't don't realize so in our kind of family room here uh, you could see through this huge window and look into my collection um, so it looks really cool. Obviously right now it's still daytime, so you can't appreciate it. But at night, it just looks so impressive when you walk in and you just see all those helmets lit up. Really cool. So there it is, guys. That was my collection. Thank you again for watching. Um, don't forget, subscribe to Collection Wars. These next couple of weeks are going to be great. We're going to have some amazing guests and some other amazing collections. So thank you for everything. Thank you for watching. Uh, I want to thank my buddy Michael, obviously, for always being on, you know, just such a great guy to, to be on the show with. And I am so glad that we started this channel and we will continue to do so. And hopefully we see you guys every Saturday. So again, don't forget, subscribe, and we'll see you next Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks, guys.